on since you know his name why don't you just give God the praise all over the place come on he knows your name act like you know his name at the name of Jesus come on every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord come on let the redeemed of the Lord come on you ought to say something you ought to open up your mouth and give him the praise come on you could be dead in the mortuary but you alive in the sanctuary you ought to open up your mouth come on come on your praise is a weapon your worship is your warfare come on shift the atmosphere with a praise shift it come on come on if you praise him in his house by the time you get back to your house, it'll already be worked out. As you praise him, he's healing your body. As you praise him, he's cleaning up your marriage. As you praise him. Come on, come on. I'm praising him because I'm expecting a miracle. I'm praising him because I'm expecting signs. I'm praising him because I'm expecting... The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. He literally gets in the middle of your situation. If you're expecting God to do something small in your life, go ahead and give him a small praise. But after all I've been through, I've been through some big battles. I've been through some big struggles. So I'm expecting God to give me some big blessings. And a big God is deserving of the big praise. You have to let your praise reflect what you expect God to do. For he dwells in the midst of it. Take somebody's hand, if you will, and as best as you can, leave no one untouched. Don't get it twisted because oftentimes behind every church face is a challenge. Behind every saintly smile is oftentimes a struggle. And struggle doesn't differentiate from me to you, but all the way down from the pulpit to the pew. The Bible says we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And so essentially he feels what we feel. He knows what we know, but he can also deliver us as we go. And surely this morning as I was musing this afternoon, meditating about what to pray before the message, thought about the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke that she was vexed and afflicted for 12 years. Believe if she was alive today, she would have had a starring role in the movie 12 Years a Slave. Because for 12 years, she was a slave to her situation. We don't know her name, all we know is her situation. Imagine going through life and being known that is the man who went to prison. That's the woman who was divorced. That's the person who was strung out on drugs. But what I love about God is that he looks past our situation. And he sees that we're in the right place at the right time for a right word from God. The miracle in the text is not that she was delivered, not so much that she was healed, but that she was sustained for 12 years. Through the battle that you have gone through, through the struggle of your situation, God has been with you all along. He has not left you, but he was there to protect you. When they neglected you, God directed you. When they gave up on you, God looked out for you. Some of us have been carrying some issues for 10, 12, 15, 20 years. But if you can just press your way to Jesus, one word from the Lord can say, woman, thou art loosed. One word from the Lord can say, loose the man and let him go. The woman with the issue of blood didn't touch Jesus, but she touched something that was touching him. She didn't touch H-I-M, but she touched the H-E-M, the hem of his garment, and was made whole from that very hour. You're touching somebody who can get a prayer through for you. As you squeeze that hand, this is what a miracle feels like. This is what it feels like to touch somebody who prayed through some trials, to touch somebody, who cried through some touch circumstances, to touch somebody who's 
got their hand in the hand of the Lord. They may not have a million dollars in the bank, but they have a relationship with the Lord that money cannot buy. You're touching somebody who may not be able to get into the White House, but they came into this church house with the praise on their lips. Don't just pray for yourself, but pray for that hand you hold. Kind and gracious Father, we just come to say thank you. Ah, uh, God, before we ask you for anything, we just come to thank you for everything. Because Jesus, you are our peace, you are our praise, our presence and our power. So God, today, move until you get through. Speak until we know it's you. We, we don't just praise you because it's convenient. But today we come to praise you because you've been consistent in our lives. Morning by morning, new mercies we're able to see. The past, the present, and the future for 82 years. You sustained us. And God, give this great pastor, give these great leaders a double portion of your strength right now. Uh, equip them for the road ahead because his ladder shall be greater right now. In the name of Jesus, touch that brother right now. Give him a breakthrough. Give my sister strength and sagacity right now in the name of Jesus. Devil, we bind you up right now. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. The glory of the Lord fills this place. The glory of the Lord fills this sanctuary. We are glory carriers right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the miracle. We thank you for the signs. We thank you for the wonders. We thank you for turning the hearts of stone into a heart of flesh. Right now in the name of Jesus, squeeze that hand ever so gently. I press a financial breakthrough in your hand. I press an anointing in your hand. I press a miracle in your hand right now. I squeeze. Uh, life and that more abundantly right now. I squeeze a fresh anointing in your hand. I press overflow. You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I press. Uh, you're coming out. It's your coming out party with every gift you have, with every anointing you have, with every power that you have right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we don't only want to thank you for what you've done. But we want to thank you for what you didn't do. We want to thank you for the disease that did not bring us down. We want to thank you for the house that did not burn down. We want to thank you, uh, God, right now for the son that we did not lose. We want to thank you for the daughter that did not go to jail. We want to thank you right now uh, for the car accident that did not happen. We want to thank you for all you've done for us. Now let your people be edified the devil horrified and your name glorified in Jesus name come on now loose those hands all over the place don't just praise him for what he's done but praise him for what he did do I don't know what you come to do but I come to praise the Lord I come to clap my hands Come to stop my feet. I don't know what you come to do. Woo. Worthy of all the praise. Sound man, give me all the monitors you can today. Shrink the place a little bit more. Hug somebody. Give them a holy hug, a high five. Tell them it's good to see you today. Come on, come on. Your name may be Jane, but you won't leave the same way you came. My name is Eddie, but right about now, I'm ready <laughs> for a move of God. He's worthy of all of our praise. Take your seat if you can. Truly do honor the Lord today for his love and saving power. What a high honor to be here at Gordy Memorial for this legacy conference. Amen. To be right here in the house and we give God great praise. We give God great deference to the indubitable, the indomitable, the powerful, prolific, and prophetic preachers, the pastor, this personality, none other than Pastor Daniel R. Granberry. Come on, come on, come on. You ought to give God praise. 11 years of pastoring, 82 years of legacy, 
Take 82 seconds and give God praise for 82 years. And while you're praising God for him, don't forget about her. Lady Janine Granberry. Come on, come on. Don't hate. Celebrate. Don't hate. Elevate. Don't hate. Congratulate. Don't hate. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And it's interesting to be here today and you think about the climate and culture of our world where, according to researchers, every month in America, 1,800 pastors leave their churches and change careers. But your pastor is still yet here at Gordy Memorial Church of God in Christ. And you ought to give God praise for that. When four in 10 pastors experience burnout by year 10 of ministry, uh, he's here in year 11. And hear me clearly because uh, it's 11 years of dealing with y'all is no small feat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he may not say it, but I will for him. <laughs> I'll be gone later today, so he... <laughs> uh, you know, Israel had the victory uh, over the enemy because they kept Moses' arms lifted. And that's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna keep your pastor's arms lifted for legacy and victory uh, because you'll be able to serve, celebrate, and stand with your pastor to take the load off of him. And your testimony will be the reason I have the victory, the reason I'm blessed, is because I blessed my leaders. Yes, yes, yes. And, and the prefix of their name is indicative and synonymous of their vision and ministry. It's grand. Some of y'all gonna get that next week. Uh, from Gaudy to Pastor Gaudy to Pastor Granberry, there, there's, this is a legacy of visionaries. And we can say that this is God's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. I had a conversation with a friend of mine. If I had called his name, you'd know who he is, but he's a good friend of Sidney Portier, who was the Denzel of his day, and I guess Denzel's the Sidney of his day. But he asked Sidney, he said, how is it that you've been able to lead and succeed notoriety, but no tarnishing your integrity? And he said, leadership is is literally the fact of the matter is character will take you to the top. Gift will take you to the top, but character will keep you on top. And he said, going through life and being a leader is like carrying a saucer of milk. Notice he didn't say a cup of milk. He didn't say a bowl. It's like carrying a saucer because when you're carrying a saucer, you literally have to walk circumspectly. Why? Because the Bible says to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. But it also said to walk circumspectly because the days are evil to redeem the time. And if I'm carrying a saucer of milk, I'd like to believe that the M in milk stands for ministry. The I stands for integrity. The L stands for leadership. And the K stands for knowledge. Aren't you grateful for a pastor who didn't spill the milk? He didn't spill your gift. He didn't spill his anointing. He walked carefully and circumspectly, step by step, through these 11 years, taking on the legacy that he didn't have to necessarily fill somebody else's shoes, but he put his feet in the shoes God gave him. As the Bible says in Jeremiah 3.15 that God will give you pastors after his own heart, and we're grateful for that. But I love what the Reverend Jeremiah Wright suggested, that there's nothing wrong with being a copycat as long as you know the right cat to copy. And indeed, and in fact, Pastor Granberry is that cat. Give God another praise. And we thank God for all of these great preachers and, and ministers who are here today and to all those in protocol, all those I don't know to call, uh, to Lottie Dottie and everybody. Uh, it's good to see you today to this mellifluous, melodious, and euphonious praise team and these incredible musicians. Yes, yes, the baddest band in River Rouge land. <laughs> we thank God for them. Listen, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I need you to do two things for me today. One is pray for me, 
been on the road a lot, but secondly, just uh, nudge somebody and tell them how much they owe you for allowing them to sit next to you. Come, come on, tell them you owe me $50. You, you sitting next to some legacy right here. You, you owe me $100 in addition to your tithe and offering. You better recognize. Amen. Yeah, you may not want to embrace me, but you can't repeal and replace me. Amen. Laughter's medicine. I got to give you a dose. There is a word from the Lord today. I want you to go with me to Genesis chapter 37. And then I want you to stick your, your thumb or scroll over to Genesis chapter 45. I'm a living witness. Your test of testimony, your misery is ministry, your mess of message, your stumbling blocks a stepping stone. And what God will do is he will use your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. You literally uh, use your tragedy as strategy. Somebody in here got a testimony that say, I don't look like what I've been through. If, if we had the color purple on these screens today, I tell you, just like Sophia, all my life, I, I had to fight. Do I got some fighters in the place? While well, you're celebrating 82 years of legacy, I'm celebrating 20 years of healing from cancer. Somebody ought to give God praise. From stage four that said, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I know I don't look like what I've been through, through the chemo, through the radiation. Oh, it's nothing but the hand of the Lord. And so uh, I know you're trying to figure out my age, and so I might as well just tell you I'm older than Michael B. Jordan, younger than Michael Jordan. Uh, I'm older than Jaden Smith, younger than Will Smith. Y'all know black don't crack. Brown won't let you down. Uh, beige don't age, and even lighter do you right. I think I got everybody today. <laughs> Genesis 37. I don't want you to text message. I want you to look at the message in the text. Verse 1 says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. He was snitching on them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Jacob was 91 when Joseph was born. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. They could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. I guess one hate ain't enough. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf and also uh, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance. It, it bowed to my sheaf. His brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Skip over to verse 23 with me. And it came to pass. And this is after Jacob sends his son Joseph into the field. His brothers see Joseph coming, and they say, Behold, here he come again. And they're plotting against him. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. It's significant. It's an interesting verse here. They took him, cast him in a pit, and the pit was empty, no water in it. It seems repetitive, but one thing it's mentioning is he won't drown because there's no water in there. Secondly, because there's no water, he cannot hydrate himself. Thirdly, if there's no water and he cannot hydrate, there's something else in the pit. And generally, it's serpent or scorpion or some dead carcass. Genesis chapter 45, verse 3, And Joseph said unto his brethren, after they had come into Egypt from the famine looking for food, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me. I want you to see me in all my glory. I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves. That he sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth. 
and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. And I want you to help me by way of subject matter. I want to tag this title. Just look at uh, your neighbor and tell them, my legacy will be, I'm not where they left me. Uh, that's, that's the wrong neighbor. Look at the other neighbor. Uh, tell them, don't look down there. I'm up here. Tell them, my legacy will be, I'm not where they left me. don't consider myself much of an Old Testament preacher because it uh, tends to deal with narrative description and I tend to lean toward definition, which is a foundational element of uh, the New Testament. Don't necessarily know how great of a storyteller I am. However, I, I could not avoid this story in particular text as I studied the book of Genesis. Oftentimes, uh, what we do as preachers, we make the mistake of only studying to preach. And uh, when you study to preach, now you're searching for it. <laughs> but when you just study to study for the love of the word, uh, now the word finds you. And I'm learning that some of the best preaching comes from when you find yourself in the text. And so open with the fact that when you have favor, it immediately and automatically brings haters. Between our destiny and victory and even our legacy lies animosity. Adversity oftentimes at the expense of people's animosity. Now, Pastor, I can remember applying for something I wanted and I just kept getting denied. I went to two specific places knowing that uh, I was a qualified, I was approved. Matter of fact, I was credible and even overqualified. But they had all of these stipulations, they had all of these excuses as to why I couldn't get approved. I, I mean, I showed them everything but my birth certificate. And they still had the nerve to tell me no. I mean, I mean it just reeked of racial discrimination. I was upset, I was per perturbed and disturbed and because they just wouldn't do me right. And I realized uh, as I had an epiphany uh, that I was fighting for something that was below me. Really, uh, here is the revelation that came out of the situation. That is, sometimes God will allow the wrong people to block you so he can push you into something better that he already has prepared for you. I wonder, do I got a few living, a few witnesses here who can, who can say, God will allow, allow the wrong people to reject me so he can redirect me into what he already has prepared for me. Essentially, they were already telling me, we don't want your business because uh, you don't have any business being here. You deserve better. I found myself scratching and uh, clawing to get people to see my value when they were blind to their own. And, and here it is. If God blocked it, then why are you standing on the door knocking on it? If he already shut the door, then why are you trying to crack the code? Why do we settle when God wants to lift us and take us to the next level? And so I literally decided to go somewhere else and, and go after something better than I thought that I thought was out of my league. Before I walked out of the door of the new establishment, before I could open up my mouth, much less say hello, I was approved and stepped out in something better than what I originally wanted in the first place. Here it is, as I'm learning and growing, I'm understanding that his ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts, and as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are his thoughts higher than yours and mine. 
So you have to say, I, I refuse to stay where people have put me. I, I'm going to a place where the right people will embrace me. Uh, I don't know about you, but my testimony is I'm tired of being tolerated. Uh, but this season of my life, I deserve to be celebrated. Uh, all that you've been through, God, God's got a celebration in store for you. Because the people who tried to break you are setting you up for God to bless you. Uh, have you ever been in a situation that you say, what in the world did I do to experience this level of mistreatment? And you find yourself, in many cases, being metacognitive. Rather, you just begin to think about what you're thinking about. And I don't know if you've ever been in a predicament where you asked, why me? Why now? But I'm learning when you ask God why, he begins to create a way. And here we find Joseph, a 17-year-old young man who was in a devastating situation because he told his brothers about a dream. And here is, in many cases, where you have to err on the side of caution to be careful who you tell your dream to. Because many people will try to make your dream into a nightmare. And hear me clearly. You can't tell everybody everything when God shows you anything. Uh, uh, whenever you have a dream, whenever you have a vision, whenever you become a dreamer, you got to expect some haters and some dream killers. And here we find Joseph is raised in a problematic household. He's raised in a problematic situation. Jacob, the father of Joseph, loves Rachel. He tolerates Leah, and then on top of that, his father now has children with the maids Bilhah and Zilpah. Uh, I'm more English than math, but now he's dealing with four women. Leah now, Leah knows Rachel, he's preferred, and so she named her children according to how she intended for Jacob to love her, thinking that each child that she gave birth to would get her closer to him, but it moved her father away from him until she just threw up her hands and named one of them Judah, which means praise. Sometimes when you get to the end of your rope, you got to throw up your hands and say, I'm just going to give God praise through this situation. Uh, brother, you thought you had an issue with one baby mama across town. Imagine living in a tent. Imagine living in a compound with four women and all the children at once. The women don't like each other, and now the animosity flows from one brother to the other. And we find that Joseph is caught in the middle of this mess. Uh, this family needs a reality TV show for show. And I know you act like you got, your family got it all together, but some of y'all have seen some straight up mess. Uh, some of y'all have come from some dysfunctional families. And it's, a wonder, it's a wonder you didn't go crazy. Uh, it's a wonder you ain't in a padded room today locked up. Somebody got a testimony to say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I would have been swallowed up. And so Joseph is preferred. He's the golden boy. He's favored. He's been marked so much so that his father gives him a coat of many colors. And because Joseph is coddled in many cases, it now makes him cocky. It instantly raises him above those who are kin to him, and now he tells his dreams to them. You see, you know why you've been hated so much? Because people see in you what you don't see in yourself. They see your power, but you remain oblivious to it. They see your greatness, but you come over there trying to fit in when you were born to stand out. Joseph was hated on because of what his father put on him and of because of what they saw in him. I just came to let a few folks know today the reason they hate you is because of what your heavenly father put on you. 
and because of what he put inside of your spirit. Because when you open up your mouth, visions and dreams just come and pour out of your spirit. And I, I can say that greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. And just like Joseph was stripped, we have allowed people to strip us of our value. They've stripped us of our self-esteem. They've stripped us of our self-respect, stripped us of the essence of who we are, stripped us of our purpose, stripped us of our power. And notice now, Joseph's brothers never took the coat for themselves, rather they destroyed it because of what it symbolized. It symbolized Joseph's favor. And here is the revelation. Uh, you got to understand and see that it's not that your enemies want what you have. They just don't want you to have it. Oh, God. Uh, let me talk to the folk in the back. Uh, let me talk to some real people today. Your enemies are, are, are jealous of your anointing, favor, and gift. But killing you won't give them the gift that God gave you. Uh, you see, it's not that your enemies hate blessings, they just don't want you to be blessed. It's not that your enemies hate success, they just don't want you to step out into success. It's not that they hate marriage, they just don't want you to strut down the aisle with the one that God has for you. It's, it's not that they hate the promise of favor, they just don't want you to be favored and they'd rather put you in a pit than to see you walk into your purpose. Uh, but somebody got a testimony in here to say the pit became my altar. The pit became a place where I began to give God the praise. The pit began, uh, became the place to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, yes, look at somebody and tell them you may be in a pit, uh, but don't you dare quit. Don't you dare give up. Uh, because the pit is where you send your praise up. Ah, uh, yes, Joseph is sold into slavery, sold first to the Ishmaelites, then for the second time into Potiphar's house. But he had to get to Egypt before the famine in the land. You got to understand, even through the struggle, even through the strife, even through the tragedy, even through the situation, God is ordering your steps. Because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And hear me clearly, sometimes the worst pain comes not from others, but from those who call you sisters and brothers. I, I want to talk to some real people in here because people sometimes people are only patting you on the back just to find the softest spot for where to stab you in the back Woo, god oh uh, yes 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 I, I don't need you to pat me on the back now i can encourage myself in the lord uh joseph was afflicted because he was gifted and you got to understand if you're gifted, you will be afflicted. If you have, if you're a visionary, if you're a dreamer, and there's a legacy that's coming out of your spirit, you've got to understand that the trying of your faith worketh patience, patience, experience, and experience hope. If you're gifted, you will be afflicted. But here's the good news, and that is after the affliction comes multiplication. Because we don't die we multiply uh, it is here then that in verse 27 of chapter 37 we find Judah which means praise uh, Judah saying come on come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites I got a problem uh, with the text because appraiser sold Joseph into slavery uh, I, I feel it in here you got to have some discernment right through here because some folk in the church are hell raisers disguised as praisers. Let me, let me help a few people in here. Uh, I, I better preach that thing another time. Uh, you, you see the devil goes to church too and will even sit by, by you in your pew. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hear me clearly. Uh, some folk will speak to you in tongues, uh, but still cuss you out in English. Uh, they, they just a hater disguised as a praiser. They hate to see you blessed. They hate to see you walk in favor. They're, they're praising with their lips, but they're plotting against your life. 
uh, because there's, there's two church members who in many cases try to eliminate uh, the type of legacy. One will help you to walk into it. Another will try to keep you from it. There's two types of church members. Uh, you have armor bearers and then you have pallbearers. Uh, ask that neighbor, which one are you? Uh, you, see, you see, armor bearers fight for you, but pallbearers fight against you. Uh, armor bearers will lift you, but pallbearers will bury you. Uh, armor bearers will encourage and speak life into you, but pallbearers will despitefully use you and persecute you and then eulogize you. Uh, armor bearers will push you into purpose, but pallbearers will put you in a pit. Uh, but the pit, Potiphar's house and the prison was the place where God was developing Joseph to ascend to the palace. You got to understand today that you may be in the pit or, or even in a psychological prison without bars, but I dare you to turn your pit into an altar. I dare you to say in the name of Jesus, I have victory coming out of my situation. In the name of Jesus, I will be powerful. Ah, uh, yes, you may be in the pit, but don't you dare trip. You got to wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your life. You may be in the pit of a divorce. You may be in the pit of a circumstance. You may be in the pit of this sickness, but you got to say, in the name of Jesus, I got my victory coming out of my situation. I'm in the valley, but I'm expecting victory. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, have you ever felt like you just couldn't catch a break? Uh, just everything is just going haywire. The enemy is, is just breathing down your neck. Haters rising on all sides. And it seems as if the devil has you right in his grasp. Uh, but I got news for you. I got good news today. And that is sometimes the devil has you right where God wants you to be. <laughs> because the situation has gone from difficult to impossibility and God is using it all as a setup to get some glory from your story so you can say I got a testimony and the fact is I'm not where they left me uh, it is here then that Joseph is human in the text uh, I'm, I can shout anytime I can I can do that but let me let me give you some meat and then we'll put the gravy on top of it Ah, Joseph is human in the text, and so he feels the anguish. He feels the betrayal, the depression, the mental discombobulation. Joseph feels the cataclysmic extirpation of his situation in his heart. And why is this happening to me? Why is this happening now? Here we find the dreamer is having a bad dream. The dreamer is caught in a nightmare. He's saying, my brothers don't like me. Potiphar's wife falsely accused me and I'm in the prison where the butler doesn't even remember me. Uh, it's enough to ask God, do you even see me? Are you even concerned about my situation? I wonder, do I got a few witnesses who have been there? I want to preach to some folks who had to go through some real pain. Uh, you can say today, I got a legacy because I had to learn some life lessons. The L I took is not the legacy. The L I took was some losses. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had so many L's. You took an L last night, but today I bounce back. You see, because the devil, yes, has tried to confound you in the place of the situation. The haters, the traitors, the conspirators, and the naysayers, the abusers, and the misusers. You had to go through all of those things, the liars and the backstabbers. But what I love about God is he will use what people fought to destroy you so he can develop you. Now, God treats your life like a photographer 
photographer and he takes you into the dark room to develop the negatives and as he's working on you this is what God does he covers you uh, yes he covers you in your situation he, he's covering you and as he's covering you he's processing you and as he's covering you he's, he's, he's elevating you as he's covering you he's anointing you with a fresh fire he doesn't expose you too quickly or the light would fracture your life but he develops your character in the dark he processes you in the pit he uses the prison to make you look through a new prism to say no I'm not looking at them but I'm looking at him to say if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side weeping may endure for a night but your oh, God is coming in the morning oh, God takes his towel of truth to cover you and while he's covering you oh, pastor he's cleaning you up while he's covering you he's wiping you off as he's covering you he's developing you so now when he elevates you in front of the people who don't like you you won't mean evil to them but you can say you meant it for evil but God meant it for my good uh, look at that neighbor and say I got a but God testimony uh, yes I went through this situation but God I was sick but God I was fired but God they fired you because you wouldn't leave God wanted you to go out and launch a new business so they had to push you out so God could push out your purpose Oh God, hold that organ a minute. I'm, I'm still working. God uses your enemies as a footstool because your haters will become your elevators. Your haters will become your escalators. Oh, I know it was painful, but you got to stop looking at it. And you got to start looking through it. Uh, it was painful, but you're going to see that it was purposeful. Through the painful process, God is using your enemies to get you blessed. Uh, yes, you meant it for evil, but God is using it as a setup for me to get up in the midst of this situation. God is even using you, and you ain't gonna like this one here, but to be a blessing to your enemies. You were in the gutter, but God created a need for your gift. You were in the pit, but the pit couldn't destroy your gift. Uh, they tried to deny you, but God assigned you. You tried to destroy me, but God developed me. You rejected me, but God protected and redirected me. Why? Because there was a famine in the land. And God knew he needed someone there to save Israel. Uh, isn't it? Might it be interesting that the reason you've gone through what you've been through? is so you could bring your family out. Isn't it interesting that the people who were born are coming from the same womb as you tried to deny you, tried to hurt you, but God is orchestrating it because he's not looking necessarily at the past. He's not looking at the present, but he's looking at your future legacy. The blessing that's on your life is going to cancel every curse. Oh God, that ran through your bloodline. Oh God, he's there because the purpose far exceeded the pain of Joseph's process. I know you say, why Lord, why me? Why now? You got your pity party hat on. Oh, uh, yeah, you just crying crocodile tears. But God ain't looking at where you are. He's looking at where you're going. Because he knows the ending before the beginning. Uh, but what I love about him, and we shout that he's the alpha and the omega. We shout that he's the beginning and the end. But what I love about him, he's also the God of the middle. And he will get in the middle of your 
your crisis. He will get in the middle of your situation. Uh, see, some folks will just wait till you get to the finish line so they can show up and say ta-da as if they always were there. But I love God. He don't show up just in my victory, but he's there with me in the valley, through the valley of the shadow of death. And you got to understand that it's just a shadow. It's not really real. It's not really substantive. Uh, the sickness is just a shadow. Oh, holy, you're going to make me hurt myself. I blow a fuse in this place. And I don't know if I have the money to pay the light bill. But I'm coming there. Oh, he shows up in your anguish. He shows up in your depression. He shows up. Because notice here, Joseph's brothers did not even recognize him. How many times have people who were associated or related to you failed to recognize the value in you? You know I'm here for convocation. You know I'm here for the conference. Why are you trying to act like you don't know me? You saw me sitting in the second row. You know you were supposed to bring me up here with one of the preachers. I'm a pastor. Uh, don't act like you don't know me. Oh, uh, yeah. Why are you trying to back brand new now? Oh, uh, yes. You got to understand just because people are around you doesn't mean that they're with you. Oh, uh, I thought you would clap, but you get quiet whenever God blesses me. But you got to just know that this next season, this next chapter of your life is going to blow your haters and your doubters mind to where you're going to have to reintroduce yourself to people hey, who you've known for 20 years. Oh God, the next blessing you're about to receive is about to make you unrecognizable. Oh. I feel it in here. You mean to tell me you are who? You are what? This is Joseph's boy. He came from the neighborhoods of Nazareth. He came from the borough, the block, and the brook. Ah, oh, place of Bethlehem. You are who? I thought you were brothers. Oh, yes, but you were not really others. You were just others. You were not kin. But you were just in the same skin. Now, Joseph's brothers did not even recognize him. Joseph had to tell his brothers, uh, come a little closer. Uh, I want you to see what you haven't seen. Because eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Get a real good look at me. Uh, you can see me, but you can't touch me. Oh, God. Uh, just tap somebody. Tell them I got an MC Hammer anointing. Uh, you can't touch this. Uh, you can see me, but you can't touch me. I'm the one you sold into slavery. I'm the one whose dream you denied. I'm the one whose life you tried to shatter. I'm the one that you talked about. I'm the one that you rejected. I'm the one that you hurt. I'm the one that you gave up on. But I'm still here by the power of the living God. I was sent here to deliver you from this famine. And what Joseph has to do, he has to protect the same people that he was rejected by. God will put you in a place to protect folks who can't stand your guts. Oh, God. Joseph could have killed them. Joseph could have allowed them to die of starvation. Due to the family, he could have put them in slavery like they did him. But I'm too blessed to be bitter. And because I'm not bitter, I became better. And I can bless you. Because thou, that's real power. Because if you have not healed, you will kill who God intended for you to save. If you have not healed, 
out. You will bleed on folk who didn't even cut you. Oh, God, I feel it in here. Oh, yes. You can't allow other people's negativity to make you feel negatively about yourself. Don't allow someone's hatred for you to affect, afflict, and infect you. But you got to bless those who persecute you. You got to pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. You got to stop allowing people who are going nowhere to stop you from getting somewhere. Because if people are talking behind your back, that means you're already ahead of them. And if they're trying to pull you down, that means they're already below you. You can't pull me down if you're above me, but you think I'm above you. And so you're trying to pull me down, but I will not go down with you. I'm rising up with power from on high because when he rose from the grave, he raised me up with power. Oh, yes, you got to stop trying to fit in with people who don't even like you anyway. Oh, you got to get the squares out of your circle because if you have people who you think will support you but they don't, you don't have a circle, you have a cage. And you got to get up out of it by any means necessary. Oh, God, I feel it in here. I'll preach the rest of it another time if you have me back. But Joseph's hate intended to break him but they got him blessed while you're trying to break me I'm getting ready to have a breakthrough in front of you Joseph's told his brothers you got to come here just a little bit closer look and see what the Lord has done you're going to have to reintroduce yourself to somebody so you can say look at the glory and because I the reason I got some glory is because I have a story and the glory don't belong to me but the glory belongs to him I'm just a glory carrier of what God has put in my life oh God I'm up out of here now oh, I'm out of time but I'm not out of truth oh, but I remember some years ago I was in a store and the guy walked up to me and when he finally recognized me after remembering my battle with cancer, it clicked in his mind. He said, I thought you were dead. Oh, God. And I felt the anger just well up inside of me. And I had every right to go oops upside his head. I had every right to play the song, Nuck If You Buck. Oh, y'all, y'all too saved for that. Oh, yeah, I got a testimony that says you can get these hands. But I'm so glad that God made it these hands. I won't pray on you. I'll pray for you. Because the next time somebody tells you I'm praying for you, tell them to spell it. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Because it ain't always P-R-A-Y. Sometimes it's P-R-E-Y. Oh, yes. But I bless the brother. And I said, I am Eddie. And I'm alive and well. You see, some people have written you off today. Some people threw in the towel. Some people left you for dead. But you got to tell every hater. You got to tell every enemy that I'm not where you left me. I'm not in that hospital any longer. I'm not in that cemetery. I'm not in that grave. I'm not in that depression. I'm not in part of his house. I'm not in the prison. I'm not in the sickness. But I am healed. I am victorious. I am a conqueror. And I made it out. Not to kill you, but to bless you. I am Joseph. I am Eddie. I'm the one you gave up on. I'm the one you walked out of. I'm the one you mistreated. But God chose me and blessed me to be a blessing to you. So I, now I can look at you and say that I am who I am 
by the grace of God. I feel I feel like preaching now. I feel like lifting them up. Because God's going to bless you so good that you'll be good to folk who were never any good to you. Don't try to get back at people because God will bless you right in front of their face. You sold me into slavery and now I have the power to make you my slave. But I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Look at that neighbor today and say let it go. It's giving you arthritis. The bitterness is causing you to have heart palpitations. The bitterness is causing you to draw in your hairline. Oh God, I feel it in here. The bitterness is causing you to move in a place of unforgiveness. The bitterness is causing you to writhe in pain. But I can't let God if I don't let go. I can't let God if I don't let go. But I've got to say that vengeance is mine. I will repay. Say of the Lord, you can't do God's job better than he can. But I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to step back. But I'm going to move forward because my setback is a setup for my greatest comeback. So fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For soon somebody holler soon. Soon holler loud. Soon and very soon they will be cut down like the grass and withered as the green earth. I'm not going backward. But I'm moving forward, forward with vision, forward with a legacy. I'm going to get more. Look at that neighbor. Shake that neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them and tell them I'm getting more, more favor. More power, more anointing, more blessing, more power, because it's in my victory, it's in my spirit, I'm more than a conqueror, look at that neighbor and tell him I'm more than that. More than the backbite, I'm more than this heartache, I'm more than this situation, I'm more. Oh, I'm out of here now, but you can't get to the palace if your enemies don't put you in the pit, the pit of loneliness, the pit of strife, the pit of cancer, the pit of anguish, the pit of fear, the pit of pity. I'm in the pit, but I won't be pitiful. I'm in the pit, but weeping me. While I'm in the pit, I'm going to give him a praise. While I'm in the pit, he's sustaining me. While I'm in the pit, he's delivering me. While I'm in the pit, I will lift up my eyes to the hills for where my help comes. My help, my joy, my power. While I'm in the prison, I know legacy is for me. While I'm in the prison, I remember my dream. I remember my anointing. I remember my vision. Because anybody you intimidate is who you eliminate. I won't focus on the enemies, but I'll focus on my 
focus that greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world why should a glass fool be envious of a sink full be envious of a tub full be envious of a lake full when you're full you're just full you're full of the anointing you can't hold no more water but out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water rivers in river rouge rivers in river rouge rivers of anointing the last time you saw me was when i descended but the next time you see me is when i would have ascended the last time you saw me was when you put me in the pit now you're gonna see me in the palace the last time you saw me was when you sold me for 20 pieces of silver but the next time you see me i'm gonna have all the gold and i'm gonna have all the silver the last time you saw me was when i was divorced but the next time that you see me i would have been married the last time you saw me was when I was broke, busted and disgusted. But the next time you see me, I'll be blessed and highly favored. The last time you saw me, I was in a hoochie. But the next time you see me, I'll speed off in something that says, He blessed me. God is giving your enemies a front row seat. God is giving your enemies because I got a legacy that supersedes slavery. I got a legacy that says I got a testimony. I'm grateful for 82 because God brought me through. Look at that neighbor and say I'm grateful for 82 because God brought us through, through the storm, through the rain, through people leaving, through people talking about me, through people trying to put me down, through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not where you left me. Don't look for me down here but look for me up there i got a legacy of love i got a legacy of joy i got a legacy of strength i got a legacy of victory Legacy, it's mine. Oh God, I feel it in here. They strip me of my coat. They strip me of my dream. But God's not just giving me a coat. He's giving me a seat. They made Joseph into a slave. But the next time they saw Joseph, he was governor. The next time they see you, you can say, I got a coat. Where your power, where's your anointing? You can take my coat, but you can't take my gift. You can take my coat, but you can't take my anointing. You can take my coat, but you can't take my peace. You can take it, but I'm not here. I'm high. Look at that neighbor. Tell him you hit too long. You've been in the pit too long. Move from the pit. Move from the pit to Potiphar's house. But don't stay there. Go to the prison and stay there a couple years. 
God's got a palace. The reason you can go from the pits to Potiphar's house, to the prison, to the palace, because God's making you the president. I got a seat. A seat of salvation. I got a seat. A seat of anointing. I got a reserve seat because you prepare a table before me in the present. Shake that neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off. And tell them, don't stay where they put you. God wants to lift you. Now lift up a praise all over this house. Lift up a praise. Meet me here at this altar. I want to pray for every leader, for every visionary, for every dreamer. For every person who's been in a pit, you coming to this altar says, I will not quit. The altar is where God alters some things in your life. I didn't come this far to only come this far. If God did all this in 82, whew, the sky is not the limit for you, it's just a view. What are you looking at? Because he said, in the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. I want to ask you, have you seen anything yet? Have you seen your anointing? Have you seen your power? Have you seen the gift that God has placed on the inside of you? And God said, even right now, I want to do a spiritual exchange. Just lift up your hands. God said, I want to do an exchange. What you're getting ready to, what's getting ready to be deposited in you. <laughs> it's going to bless your whole family. What's getting ready to be deposited in you. It's getting ready to free you from the, the abuse and the molestation that has kept you bound in that pit. What I'm getting ready to release in your spirit won't compare to what you've given up. If you just give me the unforgiveness, I'll give you an unstoppable anointing. If you just give me the fear, I'll give you favor. If you just give me the depression, I'll give you the joy. If you just let it go, let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I need somebody. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I come against every work of the enemy right now. Greater favor, greater power, greater anointing in the name of Jesus. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, God, do a deposit right now in the name of jesus he said you're a prayer warrior he said you're an intercessor he said you're coming through this situation you're coming through it with the victory right now in the name of jesus hey the anointing of god rest on you right now rest on you right now in the name of jesus ah uh, no no more time of the depression is being swallowed up in victory right now in the name of jesus man of might 
vision right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Vision right now in your spirit. Vision right now. God said, I'm anointing your hands. Whatever you put your hands to is going to prosper. Right now in the name of Jesus. A dissemination of your power. Oh God, I want you. I want you more than the money. I want you more than the notoriety. I want you more right now in Jesus' name. Every curse of the enemy is broken. Every curse of the enemy is broken. Right now, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Somebody holler the blood. Somebody holler the blood. Victory right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of this pit. I'm coming out of this prison. I'm coming out of this valley. Victory right now. In the name of Jesus. Victory right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, God. Loose your hold, Satan. Loose your hold. We thank you right now. No more torment. No more torment. Right now. Who the Son has set free. Free indeed right now. Freedom in your spirit. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom right now. In the name of Jesus. Freedom. Every curse of captivity is broken. Every curse of captivity. You coming out of the cave? You coming out of the cave? Greater assignment. Nations. Nations. Miracles. Signs. Wonders. Come on. Somebody just lose some praise in this house. Lose some praise. Give him your best praise. Give him a praise. Because he brought you out. Come on. Praise him for the legacy you're stepping into. Praise him. For the toxic relationship you just came out of. Praise him. Praise Him. Lift up your voice. When the praises go up, blessings come down. Pull down the stronghold. Pull down the stronghold of every word curse. Pull down the stronghold of every generational curse. Pull down the stronghold. God said right now he said this is your year of release God said I just released you into the territory I have for you he said what predecessors couldn't do God said I'm getting ready to double your progress God said right now I'm accelerating the anointing on your life what took 82 years God said I'm gonna do it in 82 months he said because you've been upright before me he said I've, it's been as if you've been tucked away on the back side of the desert it seems as if River Rouge has been a desert desolate place but God said the rivers are flowing right now the river of another anointing right now in your spirit the river you gonna preach like never before. Somebody stretch your hand. Oh, he said, I'm rejuvenating your spirit. The pain that was in your back, God said, I'm eliminating it. The pain that was in your spirit, God said, you gonna preach like a man half your age. God said, I'm preparing you and I'm rejuvenating you for the road ahead. He said, be not afraid of their faces. You're unorthodox, you're original, but your gift is necessary. You may not have been affirmed, but God said, I anointed you. The anointing is breaking the, the anointing that was on you in your mother's womb. God said, I'm bringing it to fruition. Whoa. It's a heavy anointing. God said, it's a heavy anointing. 
because it's an international anointing. He said the rivers are flowing again. The assignments are flowing again. The gifts, the messages, the miracles, blinded eyes opening, the lame walking, the dead rising. Look at that neighbor. Tell him the victory you had last time won't compare to the blessing you're going to experience this time. The river. It's flowing again. It's not dried up anymore. You're going to sing like never before. And when you sing, sickness is going to fall off. When you play, when you preach, it ain't dead. It's being resurrected with power. Come on. You ought to give God a praise if you've been through some crazy stuff. You owe him a crazy praise. If you've been through some battles, you ought to praise him till you get your breakthrough. Come on. On the count of three, I want you to just lose a praise in this house. Lose a praise for the legacy. Lose a praise for the victory. Loose a praise for the rivers that are flowing. One for the pop. All I need is one miracle. All I need is one blessing. All I need is one anointing. All I need is one might. Two for the sun. Because he raised us up with power. I'm not created to be dominated. I'm created to walk in dominion free because I got the Holy Ghost. Let out a praise. Come on, shout for the victory. Shout for the legacy. Shout with the voice of triumph. Praise him on the Timberland dance. Praise him on the organ. Praise him on the string instrument. Let everything that can inhale and exhale. You want to praise the Lord.
round of praise. Put your hands together and give God a glorious praise in the house. Come on, open your mouth and give it to Him. If that word was for you, come on. If that word was for you, come on. Thank God for the word that came down your street. Thank God for the word that walked up your steps. Thank God for the word that rung your doorbell. Come on, thank God for the word that knocked on your door. Amen. Come on and give the man of God, Dr. Eddie Connor, a hand as we appreciate the vessel of the Lord. Come on, let's give it to him as we appreciate the vessel of the Lord. Amen. God bless, God bless Dr. Eddie Connor. I told you that this weekend would be like no other. Amen. We had a word on Friday night. Uh, uh, a pastor, Pastor Sam Moore with his congregation spoke and released some of the same words, the prophetic words in the house. Dr. Uh, Connor and Sam Moore, uh, Pastor Sam Moore, Moore did not talk to each other. Amen. And I did not say anything about him. Didn't tell him nothing about this pain that was in my back. But we know whenever God sends a word in the house, amen, he already know. Amen. Amen. Come on and give Dr. Eddie Connor another hand. Amen. I know, I know that you have already given, but we want to be a blessing to the men of God. I know that you have already given. Amen. We're not going, I'm not going to ask for a certain amount from you. I know you're already giving, but I want you to give. Let God minister to your heart. Amen. That you come to be a blessing to this vessel, to this man of God. Amen. And it came uh, and spoke. He, he counseled a, uh, an engagement for, to come here. This is how much he thinks about uh, this ministry and, and what he thinks about me as the pastor of this uh, church and me as an individual. Uh, he was heading somewhere else. But when we called him, uh, he made arrangements to be here. I love it. And this is, this is how you know you mean uh, uh, you're important to people when you think highly of them to counsel or change engagement so that you can be with them. Amen. And uh, showing in their appreciation. But we want to be a blessing to uh, this young man. We want to be a blessing to this young man. We appreciate him and all that he do does for the body of Christ, uh, his ministry. Amen. I, I, I didn't know he can preach like this, but that man, he, uh, ooh, my goodness. I, I thought he would just focus on relationships. But he's he got depth to his well. Amen. And when you have depthness to your well, uh, God can pour whatever he wants to pour into it and and you just draw out whatever god put in it amen amen so i need you to stand with your offering whatever that amount is or you're going to give through uh, social media apps but i need you to stand uh, in that offering amen and stand with them your giving please stand if you're already giving through social media we appreciate your giving just step out from where you are amen step out from where you are Step out from where you are. Amen. 